Weather issues, uh, particularly along our coastal lines. When I joined via Skype by Dr. Christo Rotenbach from the South African Weather Services to talk to us about uh, how we should try and understand uh, these uh, sea levels and uh, some of the weather patterns that we're experiencing. Uh, thanks so much for do joining us, uh, Dr. Rotenbach. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right. So I know that uh, you are with the South African Weather Services and uh, you're a scientist in the Marine Division. And I was on your website looking at some of your forecasts and, and it predominantly f looks at the waters, the seas and so on and so forth. What do you do? <laughs> That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like you correctly said, we at the South African Weather Service Marine Division only focus on um, uh, marine weather. Um, and the website that, that I sent the link to that you had a look at is the first, um, in oceanography we call it operational for marine forecasting platform for Southern Africa, um, especially presenting the type of research that we're presenting there. Um, so if it's okay, I can give you a quick run through of what um, the listeners and viewers can find on the website. Tell us and then tell us what you measure. Yes, yeah. So um, there's a bunch of free, freely available wave forecasting platforms currently around the world, and it's no different in South Africa. Um, all of these platforms are perfect for the purposes for which they, they've been designed for. What we now present on our website is a fit-for-purpose high-resolution coastal forecast of um, the wave climate um, and what a concept that is called storm surge. Um, so if I first just look at the wave climate, so um, we've, we've got a high resolution regional model, so it's covering most of Southern Africa. Um, and then for all the major ports in South Africa, our wave forecasts go down to two kilometer resolution. Now, for the people who not, who's not constantly in the ocean and don't know of the other products freely available, none of the other products resolve South Africa's um, details around the coastline, while we now do. Um, the more important thing probably is that we now give forecasts of storm surge levels. Now, storm surge is a change of the mean sea level that you can kind of normally expect given tidal variations. Yeah. Um, but in a storm conditions, these sea levels can change dramatically. Um, and when we look at our neighbors in Mozambique, that is part of what causes a lot of the in coastal inundation and flooding is these abnormal changes in coastal water levels. All right. So when we talk about storm surge, um, uh, Cyclone Kenneth, they were talking about storm surges of about five, six meters. Does that mean that sea level went up by five, six meters in that one storm? That is exactly it. And that is why it's so important that people realize that's the definition of storm surge. Um, often people think when we talk about storm surge, they think of storm surge as the waves itself, you know. So even though a five to six meter wave is intimidating, it is not as devastating as a five to six meter rise in your expected sea level. Right. Now look, with this you also have to look at the tides because if you, if you have these extreme water levels during a low tide, you kind of combat the effect of this rise in sea level. Um, but especially when storms last longer than, than um, 12 hours and 24 hours, you will hit a high tide and, proper, and, and there's a good probability that it's even on spring high. Now a further concept that I want people to realize is that now your, your mean sea level is at this elevated level and there's usually because this is now a storm, there's extremely big, big waves associated with it as well. Yeah. So the reach of these hectic waves are now so much further inland um, to destroy coastal infrastructure and contribute to coastal inundation. All right, so I can understand the obvious application for ships at sea and people wanting to set sail. What does it mean for people on land, some of these predictions that you're able to make and some of these things that you're able to measure? So, um, so like I mentioned, so we only focus on, on the marine forecasts. Um, the land-based forecast is, is, is very mature within the South African Weather Service. Um, we focused on, on filling the gap with regards to the ocean forecast. Yes. Um, so, but we do use the very, very high resolution and, and Rolls-Royce product, atmospheric product of the South African Weather Service called the Unified Model to force our um, coastal models. Um, and we work very closely with yeah. disaster management and coastal oh, municipalities so, so, and metropoles. So, so perhaps what I'm trying to do is uh, we had Cyclone Idai, Cyclone Kenneth. How much of 
your predictions could have helped us understand what was going to happen uh, based on some of the things that you were seeing in advance of it? So currently, because our prerogative is South Africa, yeah. our model yeah. only goes up to kind of um, Maputo Bay in right. Mozambique. Right. Um, but now, once because we've now developed our tools for South Africa, we can ex- expand our domain of interest. Right. Right. Um, because if this tool um, was freely available for Mozambique, and especially the communication of the science yeah. to the people involved, um, early warning is key. Because yeah. then, together with local disaster management authorities, People could have been um, evacuated out of very threatened areas. All right. And then uh, wave uh, measurement, uh, what does that do apart from help the surfers figure out where to go (laughs) to do the best surfing? (laughs) (laughs) So um, because we are a research unit, we work together with almost all the other South African research institutes. Um, So we do, from ecological studies, um, to coastal protection studies. So together with engineering departments, we are now able to, to tell engineering companies and engineering departments when is the best window to deploy certain instrumentation. So, for example, the desalination plant that was um, commissioned a year and a half ago, yeah. um, the, the, con- the construction companies actually need a window where they know we can tow out the pipelines without facing too bad weather or too bad um, wave conditions, and that can potentially save them millions. Um, and then serving people like surfers and small small boats and, and sailboats is part of our, our mandate, is part of our, our duty as to take care of safety of life at sea. Um, yeah, and working with port authorities for ship routing and ship safety. All right. So just uh, uh, so that anyone who's interested in uh, finding out all of these things for free on your website, what's the uh, web address? So you can go to www.weathersa.co.za forward slash marine forward slash. Fantastic. Um, and all the tools and, and products are freely available there. Um, and if, if anyone is interested in specific tools or high resolution tools, we are more than um, willing to help. And if I may add one more thing. Yes. Um, we are going to launch a public participation study fairly soon, um, focusing on from disaster response communities, recreational users and small craft users. So if anyone is looking at the program, listening in, um, and they are keen to form part of this type of study, please drop us a line via our website as well. Fantastic. Dr. Rotenberg, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us. And we love the waves in the background there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that's uh, Dr. Christo Rotenbach from the SA Weather Service uh, telling us about uh, some of the innovations that the uh, SAWS has, particularly in their marine unit, to measure uh, wave formations and other uh, marine-related weather activities, uh, storm surges and things like that. And that could help in terms of early warnings uh, for some of the cyclones and uh, activities that we've seen in recent times. So visit their website, um, www.weathersa.co.za forward slash marine. All right, we move on.